in the last video we we're going to talk about component did mount and component will unmount uh, and this will be the last video for component lifecycle methods and in the upcoming video after this we will discuss how to build real-world application we'll build nav bar we'll build some forms uh, footer header contact forms etc okay so let's start with that so what happens in component did mount as we know that looking at the chart when the component is mounted which means after the state is initialized inside of constructor or even if you don't define constructor when the component is mounted uh, react updates the doms and reference that's when the component did mount is called and the component will unmount is called when it is removed from the dom okay uh, so this is the best place to load the data from the remote endpoint because you're sure that your component has been rendered onto the screen uh, onto the UI okay and uh, you can load all the data from the remote endpoint calling set state here will trigger an extra rendering uh, why because if you are setting a state inside of component did mount uh, because it's already been called once once the component did mount it if you call set state you know that random method is going to be called and if you look at the chart okay a random method will be called okay in the set state it will be called one more time but the thing is that uh, it will happen before the browser updates the screen so you don't have to worry okay so let me just show that to you in action so this is my home component I will use component did mount and if you do a console log as console log is mounted if you refresh check you can see it's mounted okay and uh, if you want to follow if you want to actually see the sequence uh, you can see that quickly props super props okay so constructor called mounted did mount I'm just putting the short form did mount called and render called so ideally what should happen is the constructor should be called first then the render and then the component did mount we should have the sequence let's see constructor render did mount exactly it is right great so so you can see that when the component did mount uh, this method was called however if you want to load a data let's take an example of a fake JSON API so we can use JSON place holder dot type code dot com and we can use fetch to fetch some data some dummy data so we can use this and you can see that it requests this API and gets the data for us and uh, it gives us some response and after we get response you can do the some some you can do something with that data okay so let's see at this point we can do this dot set state in fact first we need to initialize the state so this dot state is equal to data and currently we'll set to nothing and keep it empty and when we get the data I want to set state data value to the JSON object that we have received this one okay in fact before even we do that let's just console log to see what we're getting in this JSON data and we can just name it as received received data okay so let's have a look so you can see constructor called render call did mount call and then we've got the data so what have we got you've got user ID we've got title ID completed and all of that stuff right great so that's set state so what do you expect to happen so what should happen is basically first the constructor will be called then component mount will be called which is this one when this is called it will go ahead and fetch the data okay while it's fetching render will also be called before that okay and then once its data is fetched it's going to set the state which means again render will be called and we'll get the data in this over here okay so if I want to go ahead and uh, use that data then we can do that by checking const my data is equal to this dot 
state dot data. Okay, and in fact, we can actually create a function. We can say render data. Okay, and over here we can say this data is equal to this and then we can check if you've got the data my data dot so what is it is it object or array what is it let's see it's an object okay so if it is an object then I should be able to get any of these so let's say ID if it's available then go ahead and display some content so I can say return and you can, if you want to use JSX, you can use these round packets. And we can say div. And what all we have? We have user ID, title, all of that stuff. So we can say title. And we can use these curly braces, which will evaluate whatever ins is inside of it. So we should have my data dot name. So sorry, sorry, title. Right that's what we have and then we can also display the ID also so with the ID and that will be my data dot ID okay so this is what is going to be returned by render data and I can just call this function over here let's keep this clean so this dot render data because remember this is the method of the home class so it will be accessible with the this keyword which refers to the class so so class name dot render data okay so let's try this to see how that goes and sure enough you can see that we have got data be being displayed over here but what if the data is not there then should we want to display something maybe we can say loading okay so again we can return something we if there's just a single line we can return like this so we can say a p tag and then just say loading right you can see that right okay in fact if you want to improvise it I can also do loading inside initialize this loading and set it to true so initially it will be loading to true and here we can put the value we can check so inside of the curly braces inside of JSX you have an option to check condition also so in JavaScript you know that you can do like this you can say this dot state dot loading and then you can put and and then you put loading over here in a string okay so what this will happen is that it will check if this evaluates to true okay then it'll show loading if this evaluates to false then whatever is there on the right hand side of the expression will not be shown okay so now initially this state for the loading will be true and once we receive the value over here we can actually go ahead and set the loading to false brilliant you can see loading and then so on if you check over here refresh the page initially you see it's loading oh. I think it will be better if I call this API with a trigger of a button later on but let's leave that but you get the idea right initially it will be loading and uh, loading was true earlier and then after that once uh, initial state was loading was true that's why we had loading being displayed like this and then as soon as we got the data we set the state of loading to false so we don't have this loading text right and uh, in fact we don't even have to put it here we can just put that here as well so this won't be shown in fact we can wrap this entire thing inside of this p tag so why should I why do I want to display p tag when it's not loading 
like this. So now you can see I still have loading. And if you do an inspect element, we have p tag, uh, but we don't have we don't have loading actually. So if I refresh, it's happening fast, guys. So you, you can't see that, but uh, you get the idea, right? So this will loading will be shown initially and then later on it will render the data so it will render this content over here because that's what is being returned over here okay guys uh, the last but not the least is component did unmount before that we'll just recap this one so so we've already discussed this part so it load you can load data from a remote endpoint calling set state will trigger an extra rendering but will happen before the browser updates the screen and then we'll discuss the uh, quickly component will unmount this one yeah so component in uh, will unmount will be invoked immediately before a component is unmounted for example invalidating timers cancelling network requests or cleaning up any subscription is done in component will unmount so one component is unmounted okay so in the previous video where I had shown you that whenever for example you do a set interval inside of component did mount make sure you unsubscribe from that by clearing the interval inside of component will unmount you should not ca call set state as a component will never be rendered because once the component is unmounted even if you call set state 100 times it will not be ren rendered because it's, it's left okay guys so let me give you an example I'll say component will unmount okay I just want to console something over here component unmounted so when the component is unmounted this console one will be called okay so let's go into its parent component what we're going to do over here we will define initialize the state for the app component and we do that by defining constructor method passing props over here we do super props and then we initialize a state and I'm just going to say the value of show to false okay and now let's put a button over here okay and on click this dot handle on click and let me just say click over here define this method and I'm gonna set the state and we'll say show and this time instead of setting it to true I can just go ahead and say not this dot state dot show so what this is going to do is that if the value of this dot state dot show is false it will return true the first time the button is clicked the next time if the value the value will be true so it's going to return opposite of that so basically not means opposite return whatever is the opposite of the current state uh, of show is okay so you can like you can toggle between this all right so let's see so we have a click button okay and you can see that constructor is called did mount is called what we're expecting to do is basically we want to hide this component I want to show this component only if the show value is true so what I can do is I can say this dot state dot show when this value is true and so we've already learned this that whatever value uh, is on the right hand side will be you know shown only if the value on the left hand side evaluates to true so now I can put this entire component like this inside of the uh, curly braces so JSX allows us to put expressions in inside of our curly braces so it's going to evaluate that okay so if this is true show the component if this is false then of course the this uh, value on the right hand side will not be uh, shown so let's try that so initially it's false I'm gonna go ahead and check so you can see it's false right if I click over here it becomes true and now the component is shown right but what do we expect 
you can see that currently component did unmount is not called why it is not un uh, called is because component is not unmounted is actually mounted okay so that's why did mount is called in fact I want to show that to you one more time so currently if you click you can see constructor call did mount call off the home component because it came into the DOM okay so now if I click this again you can see that it says component unmounted why because the component is not shown anymore okay we are, there's a condition that we are checking over here it's only if the value of show is evaluates to true sh you should show the component if it evaluates to false then do not show it so if we check now the value is false hence it's not shown so you can do this by the click of the button you can toggle like this or you can just change from here as well so if you can set it true you can see right and you can see that component unmounted again did mount called all of that stuff is happening over here so the moment you click it's unmounted right so that's basically pretty much it about component did uh, sorry component will and uh, this was component did right component will unmount not did mount okay so component will unmount cool perfect guys so I hope you did like the video if you did please uh, do like um, on this video and uh, do subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions you can leave in the comment box and in the next video we will build some, build some real life uh, sorry real uh, world uh, applications where we will create some nav bars some pages and some forms etc so we'll start building guys so we have I think by this point if you've already uh, you know learned and followed along the entire series I think at this point you're pretty much in a position to start building applications you've got enough knowledge of react because that's pretty much it to react guys it's just managing your state uh, just knowing what these lifecycle methods do just taking care of them as as in when you need you didn't actually uh, have to use all the components uh, that I've shown you the component lifecycle methods there's only like a few of them which are frequently used so you have constructor which is used you have render you have component did mount will and mount so these are the basic uh, main components that which are used over here so if you have a check constructor component did mount component did update component will unmount render so these are the main lifecycle methods that are used and you can divide these in in three phases mounting updating and mounting and this is your uh, Bible for the component lifecycle because you have got all of the information here like it's pretty much self-explanatory okay guys take care then I'll see you in the next video take care